I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! All right, everybody, welcome to the All Things Rangers or the ATR Bar Talk segment, where we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. And as a change to everything now, we have graphics. Well, we could either do some little beers that are all down here, or um, you got the shot glass, or you got a beer right there. Yeah, so that just saved myself hours of editing time with this. <laughs> so by the way, also, if you haven't done it already, make sure you leave us a like. And the whole sure, reason why I don't use it one too much is because it's right over Anthony's mm -hmm. face if I do that. All right. Our first topic. Uh, New York Rangers are a playoff team next year. Phil. Yeah, and I was just responding to uh, Stephen Greco before in, in the comment section. And I, I think so. I'm going to I don't want to say buy around, but I'll, I'll, I'll go with a beer here because I think that there'll be a wild card team. I think, you know, if it was under the, the old format, they would be anywhere from a six to eight seed. I would say, I, I think they can absolutely do it. It just depends on the, the kids. It depends on the three kids. If the lineup is configured the way that I think it'll be configured with Kreider on the third line and the three kids in the top six, to balance out the scoring and, and balance out the lines, I think that they have a much better chance of being a much better team. Like I said before, the bottom six absolutely needed to be revamped. It needed to be improved, and it was big time. So that's going to help this team play. Gerard Gallant loves running four lines, unlike David Quinn, um, who overused his fourth line at times. Gerard Gallant will balance them out the right way. Gerard Gallant himself will also make this team better. So, I mean, you got a, another year of experience for the kids. Um, I believe Chris Kreider invited Alexi Lafreniere and all the other young kids to go train with him in the offseason, which is huge because Chris Kreider is an absolute gym rat. We all know that. He's probably one of the most well-conditioned athletes in the entire league. Um, he'll put them through hell, and he'll make them in much better shape. He'll make them stronger. Um I just think that this team is probably a playoff team, but not a team that makes a ton of noise in the playoffs, possibly maybe. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the beer. Um, I'm actually going to be overconfident. And if it was, it was bold predictions, uh, like we'll be doing at the beginning of next season, that'll be a different story, but I'm going to say I'm buying everybody around on this. Um, the Rangers, it's tough to do it in that division because that division is going to be a monster. And the hardest thing to predict, and as we're going to get into that a little bit uh, soon, is uh, when Washington or Philadelphia or, or Pittsburgh are going to drop off. Philadelphia might jump back up into the mix. We don't know. It's not like Elaine Vigneault forgot how to coach, though it looked like Chuck Fletcher forgot how to be a GM. Um, the uh, I, I think the Islanders are in um, – and it's hard for me to look at Carolina right now and go, they're going to be in because the Carolina's got some holes. So even though they got a bunch of quality teams in their division, I'm going to go with the Rangers make the playoffs. Anthony. Yeah, this is this. Well, uh, first of all, I'm going, I'm going beer because I mean, it's not a shot because I'd say no chance and round is saying definitely, which so I truly lie in the middle here. Um, you know, Obviously, in the in the Atlantic, you're going to have Boston, Tampa Bay, Toronto, likely as the top three. Um, but then you have Florida, who was who was a really good team this past season. Um, that's going to be fighting the Rangers for a wild card spot. And then in the Metro, um, you know, you're going to have a couple of teams jostling for wild cards slash that top three. You know, Mark mentioned the Flyers. You know, they added Ryan Ellis, Ristolainen, and Yandel on defense. You know, they made a lot of moves. Um, so they could be a good team again. I mean, who who really knows? And obviously they made the swap of Cam Atkinson for Jake Voracek. Um, you know, Pittsburgh and Washington, uh, I said this past season they were going to miss the playoffs, and I was dead wrong on that. I'm always waiting for the bottom to fall out um, on them. If it does, the Rangers could easily step right in. But I don't can, – can you really bet against them? It's, it's, they seem to always prove you wrong when you say they are. Um, and then there's the Hurricanes, who – that, you know what? That's the one team I'll say uh, they might not be as good. You know, they lost 
you know, Delkovich, who was really good. They lost Morazic, their other goalie, and they brought in what? Uh, Freddie Anderson and Anthony Ranta. I, I, you know, to me, that might be a little bit of a downgrade in my, in my opinion, because Delkovich had a really good rookie year. I'm not that high on Freddie Anderson. Um, and then the other moves they made were kind of like, eh, but yeah. So I don't know this, this is, this is, this is tough. Um, you know, I, I think the Rangers are going to be battling for that, for a wild card spot for sure. Um, for me, it comes down to Florida. Can the Rangers be a better team than Florida next season? That I honestly, I, I don't know. I, I could see it happening. Um, but I mean, You're forgetting about head, a team. what team is he forgetting? Oh, Montreal. No, Montreal's we're not in their division, but <laughs> I can tell you right now, that team's not going to be as good. They're not going to be as good. And Carolina, you also forgot Dougie Hamilton's not there anymore. Look at that yeah. defense. Look at it. It's Slavin, Pesci, and then you have Ian Cole, who really isn't all that great. Ethan Bear, who could be a good puck mover for them. Tony <laughs> D'Angelo, who we know is a dumpster fire in his own end. Brady Shea, who is another dumpster fire in his own end and just massively overpaid. Jake Gardner, who, again, another dumpster fire in his own end. Where is the defense there? So... That's a good I, point. I don't like that team's defense. I don't like that team's defense at all. And you know what? The the forward group. I mean, Morgan Geeky's gone. Not that I not that I think that he was the biggest guy, but he gave them some solid depth back there. I mean, Jordan Martin looks back at a, at, at a decent price. I mean, they still have their top six in check, but I mean, I I, I don't know. It just it, to me, it, they have enough space for Svechnikov. They don't have to worry about that. It, it, it just they didn't they didn't get better they they they, they downgraded I think quite a bit no I, I don't, yeah I don't think they got better I don't think they got better Philly I'm not sure on either I mean really if you look at it is Ristol line in an upgrade on Shane Gossespierre I don't think so I mean Cam Atkinson's a, a, a goal scoring upgrade on Jake Voracek but is Cam Atkinson a better player than Jake Voracek no. No. Well, that's that's where the conversation is gonna be in. Yeah. Um we're gonna we're gonna move on to the next one though. Uh otherwise, because we're gonna be here for a while ranking every single team. Yeah. And don't worry, <laughs> we're gonna go back to the metro in a minute. Yeah. Um yeah. Adam Fox's next contract will be closer. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was trying Bless to get you. the question out first. Thank you. Bless you. Um and don't worry, it's not from a disease of unknown origin. Um ah. <laughs> the uh, Adam Fox's next contract will be closer to Zach Wierenski's new deal than Kel McCarr's. Anthony, your thoughts on that? You know, I was surprised with that Wierenski contract, but, you know, based on how people have been filing out of Columbus, I, you know, I guess it's really not that much of a surprise that Columbus really made a huge commitment towards him because he's their best player now. Um, but I, I would say it'll be more like, more like Kel McCarr, personally. Um, you know, I, I think, I mean, listen, all three are really good defensemen. I also think they're very different defensemen personally. Um, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say shot. I think it'll be more similar to Kale McCarr than Zach Wierenski's deal. Okay. I'm going to say shot. And I think that it might be under Kale McCarr's deal. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that he takes a discount. Um, he wanted to be here. He spurned two different teams to, to basically force his way to the Rangers. Um, I think I think eventually you're going to look at a deal for him that's probably about eight years and $8.75 million per. I, I think it'll be just under nine. I would love it if you could get him for eight, eight and a half and under, but I don't think that's going to happen at this point. I think – Eight years, eight point seven five million is probably what you're going to look at for Fox. So I'm going to say shot here. Uh, let's make it a clean sweep because uh, I'm going to say shot as well. And the reason why is because everything you just outlined. He wants to be here. He's going to give them a home down discount. He's going to want to play for his favorite team. And um, you know something, I, Adam Fox. He's a team guy. He's going to get the pressure from the union to kind of up those numbers a little bit. I think it's closer to be. Um, maybe a Thomas Shabbat deal 
a little bit. I think Shabak got eight million, right? Or Shabak he, got eight, eight, eight years, sixty-four. Right. So that's that's what it's going to be closer to than even Kale McCarr is. I mean, both of them are ridiculous. But mm. and the great thing is Adam Fox is only going to get better because that's who Adam Fox is. Anthony, going back to you right here, the New York Islanders will acquire Vladimir Tarasenko. Um. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go beer. I mean, they've they've been in the mix since his name come up. They've been consistently one of the teams mentioned. Um, you know, it's a fit for both. I know Jeremy Rutherford said in an article, an art piece he wrote a couple maybe last week, um, that, that obviously Tarasenko would be willing to wait for the Islanders. The Islanders need another high end goal scorer. Um, it's just a matter of if a team like New Jersey outbids them. I know New Jersey in the mix, which. This is weird to me. I, I wouldn't think Tarasenko would want to wave to go to New Jersey, but I guess if he really if he really wants to get out of St. Louis that bad, maybe he will. Um, but I mean, the the fit the fit is there. Um, it just comes down to St. Louis realizing that they're not going to get the moon for a guy like him right now, and and you know, kind of come to their senses and just and move him. Um, and obviously, the salary tension is a big part too. I you know I outlined before St. Louis. Um, has to re-sign Sanford and Robert Thomas. They probably want to get all of Tarasenko's seven and a half million off the books, but um, I also don't know if that's realistic. So, um, like Kevin Adams, I, I kind of think Ta Doug, you know, Doug Armstrong is being a little is being a little un, you know unreasonable with his request for Tarasenko right now. So, um, who knows? He might stick to his guns though. So, um, but yeah, I think the Islanders are leading candidate to get him. So. Um, I'm going to go beer. The only reason why it's not around is because if, I feel like if it was that much of a slam dunk, um, you know, Lou would have pulled it off already. So, but we'll see. There's still a lot of time left. Phil. Well, I'm beer here. Um, like Anthony said, they've been in the conversation ever since his name came up. Um, I just wonder if Armstrong is going to be like Anthony said, he's going to back off like Adams has to back off. Um, I don't think the market is really there right now because I think teams are really concerned about that shoulder and they have every right to be because when a player has three consecutive surgeries, even if the third one is really the one that corrects the actual issue, um, you know what? A team has a right to be concerned. You're giving up assets for a player who's closer to 30 years old whose numbers have kind of fallen off a little bit because of that injury. Uh, I mean, that's a shooting shoulder too. So if, if that's a fix, that's a big problem. So um, I'm going to say beer here. I, I do think that if he's dealt, I, I think that they're the favorites to land him though. So, yeah. uh, I, I can only say the word beer only because I want to say bye to everybody around. I'm convinced the Islanders are going to get him. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think there's a chance St. Louis, he goes back to St. Louis. It's not as nasty as the Eichel situation, but uh, nothing is. I mean, Jesus, nothing is. So um, I would have to say they're, that's the guy they needed. When we were talking about Gabriel Landeskog two weeks ago, and even last week, I was like, the Islanders don't need uh, Gabriel Landeskog. They have Andrews Lee, who's the, almost the exact same player. Um, what they need is a trigger man for that power play. And if you throw him up in the Ovechkin spot, even though I think Tarasenko's a lefty, right? He's a lefty, yeah. He would be all right. right. Yeah, you the Kucherov put, spot. You put him on the right point then. That's all you got to do. And then yeah. bombs away, and good luck to every goaltender with Anders Lee's ass in front of you. So, um, <laughs> yeah. That, that's why I think it, he just fits the Islanders so well. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.